Hello everyone, this is Reza Dorani. In today's video, we will leverage the new JSON form formatting options in SharePoint to enhance the list form experience. We will also leverage templates in the form of Microsoft list templates and Power Automate approval templates to build an end-to-end -end solution experience. So let's get started with the video, but first, my introduction. The use case I will cover here is around a travel request process. In my modern SharePoint communication site, I will go to new and create a new list and I will leverage the Microsoft list templates right here. The travel request template is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to select travel requests and this will create the list for me based on the template. Once I select use template. So I'm going to keep the name as travel requests and I will click create. And just like that, we have a list ready to go for creating travel requests in my SharePoint site. If I click the new button, I will get the standard SharePoint form for creating a new travel request. However, I want to utilize the new formatting options. So for that first step, I will go to configure layout and in the body formatting option, I will plug in the sections and put the display names of my columns so I can create a multiple column format for this form. So I've gone ahead and plugged in my JSON right here. If I click preview, you will note that this form now is in a multi section format and the JSON is very simple. I have my sections defined. I have the name of my section and the fields, which are the display names of my columns that I would like to showcase in those specific sections. I have covered this in detail in my first video. The description of this video has the link to my first video. So do check that out. Now I will click on save. Now for this form, I have airfare and hotel as two sections and out here, the user can select a specific airline and then put in the estimated airfare cost. Now I would like to add some conditional formatting here because what if the user does not require any airfare or basically doesn't want to cover airline as part of his travel request. And the same case goes for hotel as well. In that case, we can add some very simple conditional formatting for that. I will go to edit columns and for the estimated airfare column, this is the column that I want to show or hide based upon the fact that an airline is selected or not. So for this, I will head over to edit conditional formatting and I will plug in my formula right here. And my formula is relatively simple. If the airline is equal to empty, then false. That means hide this column. Otherwise true. That means showcase this column. So I will go ahead and select save. If you notice in the form column is now not visible and I will do exactly the same for the estimated hotel cost. So I'll go to edit conditional formula and my formula is if the hotel is empty, then false that is hide the column. Otherwise show it. I will click on save. And if you observe the form now, the moment I select an airline, the estimated airfare will show up. And the same thing goes for the hotel column as well. I would like to create some additional columns in my form. And those two columns are going to be related to my approval process. So for that, I will head back to the SharePoint list and I will add two columns. My first column would be of type choice. I will call this my approval status. And for this choice column, I will add my approval statuses. So here are my five choices that I have added. And the approval process that I'm putting in place is a two level approval process in which first the approval request goes out to the user's manager and then it goes out to the HR team for approval. When the manager approval begins, the status would be pending manager approval. Once the manager approves it, it heads to pending HR approval. Once the HR user approves it, the status goes to approved. If either of the manager or the HR user rejects the approval, the status would be rejected by manager or rejected by HR, depending upon who has rejected this. I will click on save and I will add another column here of type multi line of text. And I'm going to call this approval commands for storing the historical commands 
for storing the approval history and the comments that the user has entered in this column. So I'll click on save. Now that I have this in place, next step, I will head over to new form again. And this time I will go to configure layout and I will change the body to include a new section for approvals. And I have added those two columns right here in this section. So if I head over to preview, I will see my new section, which is the approval info section right here. I will click on save. Now remember that the list has been built based on the template and I have created my own approval status column. So the approved column that comes along with the travel request template, I no longer need it. So I will go to column settings, edit and remove this column. Now, once the user starts creating a new form out here, the user can fill the standard information. That is the title of the trip. So I'm calling it Seattle trip, the reason for travel, the requester. And right here I can pick a location. Now this destination column is actually a location column in SharePoint which is a smart address lookup type column. So as I start typing in the address right here, so as you can see, it's providing me live addresses based on the address lookup nature of this column. So I will go ahead and pick Microsoft Corporation right here. So that's my destination. As part of the form formatting options, if I head over to configure layout, apart from the body, I can also configure the header. So what I will do in this case is I already have my JSON pre-built and I'll walk you through what my JSON does. I will click on preview. The moment I plug in the destination in the header, I am getting a Bing map image that is showing me the actual destination that the user has selected right here. And it's plotting the location on the map. Apart from that, I also have a header that shows where we are in the travel request approval process. So what's my destination? It's Microsoft Corporation. So that's the destination right here. What's the total dollar amount? Well, that depends upon the estimated airfare and the estimated hotel amount. So if I was to pick an airline right now, so let's say I pick Southwest Airlines. And if I enter the estimated airfare as let's say $500, notice right here on the top, the header formatting has plugged in the cost of the airfare. Now, if I select a hotel, so let's say I pick a hotel in Seattle. Once again, this is a location column in SharePoint. Now I can put in my estimated hotel cost. Let's say I plug the cost as $660. Check the header. It's actually adding the cost of both the estimated airfare and the estimated hotel cost. So we can see the total cost right here in the header itself. Also, my approval process is a two layer approval process when it moves from the manager approval all the way to the HR approval. So the header is showcasing where we are in the approval process currently. Gray signifies that the approval process has not started. So the first step is manager. It's gray. The process has not started. The process will begin once a new item is created in this SharePoint list. And we will leverage Power Automate for creating an approval process. Now, if you look at the JSON associated with the header formatting, there are two key aspects to it. One is the Bing map. And the way I leverage that is I added this image type element. And for the source property, I have leveraged the Bing maps API, which returns a static image. And all I had to do was literally just pass the latitude and longitude, the destination column, which is the location column in SharePoint grants me those property values. So if I do destination dot coordinates dot latitude, it gets me the latitude same way I can do for the longitude. And then after that, I've defined the Bing map size and I've provided my Bing map key right here. And finally, for putting the pin, I'm passing the attribute for the pin right here. Once again, I'm providing it the latitude and the longitude. So that's how that map is getting generated. Also for the map, I have added an anchor tag. So if you select the map, it will directly open the map and focus on the latitude and longitude coordinates based on the destination column that the user has provided. On the other side, for the approval process, I have defined my process as part of the JSON itself. I know I have manager approval. So that's my first section that I'm creating right here. And then I have the HR approval. Now currently the status that I'm showing for the manager approval and for the HR approval has a gray background to it. That's because the approval has not started. 
And the way I change the color of that status indicator is basically by checking the approval status column. That means where we are in the approval status. Based on that, I am going ahead and defining the color of that status indicator. And that is true for both the manager approval column as well as the HR approval column. So back to my header formatting right here. The map is indicating the location. If I select this, it will open Google Maps and plug that latitude and longitude. The approval status, as you can see right now, is both of them are grayed out. We will add an approval process, but let's say if I was to set the approval as pending manager approval, that's the first step. If you observe right here, the status indicator for manager approval is yellow. That means currently it is in pending manager approval. And as the status keeps progressing, let's say finally it gets approved. In that case, both of the statuses for manager approval and HR approval will turn green. Now, right now I'm changing the statuses manually, but we will automate this process using Power Automate. So let's see how we can do that. Now, the beauty of Power Automate and Power Apps is that they integrate directly with SharePoint. In my case, I'm trying to create an approval process. So all I have to do is for this list, which is my travel request list, I will head over to automate, go to power automate and create a flow. Now, when I am creating this flow, I don't have to start from scratch. There are so many templates that are available that I can leverage straight out of the box. So for example, here is one template that says start approval when a new item is added in this list. And that's exactly what I want. So I will select this. And this now leads me to Power Automate, wherein it will create a flow based on a template and connect it to the SharePoint list. This flow uses multiple connections, Outlook for sending the email notifications, SharePoint because it's connecting to the SharePoint list, approvals because it is sending out the approval task. And finally, it is also connecting to Office 365 users to read certain AD properties for the user. So I will click continue and this now will generate the flow based on the template that is provided. Since this is a template, we are free to modify this template once the flow is generated from it. So let's look at what this flow does. When a new item is created in my travel request list, it goes ahead and creates an approval process. It's not defined who the approval is going to be assigned to. In my case, I want the first approval to go to the manager of the user who is creating the request. Now, in order for me to get the manager of the user, all I have to do is this. We'll go to add an action, search for the Office 365 users connector. And for this, we have a get manager action. If I select this, it is asking me for the user principal name or the email ID. If I head over to dynamic content, and search for the created by email of the user who created the item. So if I select this, it will now give me the profile information of the manager of the individual who created the travel request. And now for this approval process, what I need to do for the assigned to column is head over to dynamic content once again, and just enter the email of that user's manager. So now the task will be assigned to the user's manager. Now that we have the approval task defined, if you observe right here after the approval task as part of the template, if this action is successful, it goes through the left side of the branch. And if there is any failure, it goes through the right side of the branch and basically sends an email out to the user that there was some issue with the approval action. Now the flow is doing error handling right here. I want to simplify this flow for the purpose of this demo. So I will just go ahead and delete all the actions on the right hand side of the branch. So I just deleted the right hand side of the branch and right here after the approval action, we have a condition and the condition is checking to see the response of the approval. If it is approved, it will send an approval email back to the person who created the item. If it is rejected, it will send a rejected email message to the person who created the travel request. But I'm just going to change the subject here. I'm going to say approved by manager or I'm going to say rejected by the manager so that we know that this is the manager task. Now, apart from sending notification emails, we also want to set the status of the approval process. Now, when this flow is triggered, 
we want to start an approval process but right before that i want to first set the status in my approval status column and if you look at the statuses that we put in place i would like to put the status first to pending manager approval so for that right before the approval action i will add an update item action for sharepoint i will pick my site which is the same site in which i have the list i will pick my travel request list and the id would be the id from the trigger itself so i'll go to dynamic content and pick the trigger any mandatory fields that are a part of the form have to be filled out again so for the title i will go ahead and pick the title column from the trigger itself and the things that i would like to change right now is one the approval status so i'm going to change this to pending manager approval and in the approval commands in the approval commands i just want to mention that the approval process has started and you can also plug in emojis right here i just plugged in a very simple emoji that i copied from the web it just adds more character to the approval history or approval command section now based on the approval response we are sending an email back to the person who created the travel request but we also want to change the status of the item now in order for me to do that instead of recreating this action i can even copy paste actions i will go to the update item action i will copy this in the approve section i will go ahead and add this back from my clipboard for this action the things that i would like to change are one is the approval status so i would change this now to pending hr approval why because the next step that i'm going to plug in after this is going to be the hr approval action and for the approval commands what i would like to put in place is this i would like to say approved by now which user has approved this i will go to dynamic content and in dynamic content if i search for the responder approver name i'm just going to select this so it's going to put the name of the approver so approved by the approver and i would also like to put in the commands that the approver has put in and for that once again i will head over to dynamic content search for commands and the commands that the approver has provided i will just plug it in right here now if i update the item it will add this approval commands in place but the previous command that i put in place for example approval process has started it would overwrite the previous command so i need to maintain the previous command as well and the way i can do that is right here in the approval commands i will hit enter i will head over to dynamic content and search for approval commands and from the update item action because this is the action that has the first command that i plugged in so from that action i will pick approval commands on the other side i would like to go ahead and set the status to rejected and for that i will once again copy this head over to the no side of the branch go to my clipboard and paste it right here now if i open this action change the approval status here to rejected by manager that's because the manager is rejecting it i can change the approval commands to rejected by the approver and then the commands that they put in so for the rejection i'll add an emoji and for the approval i will add the check mark emoji and now for the hr approval process all i have done is literally just gone ahead and recreated the steps as before wherein i have an approval task that goes to my hr admin in my case i have selected a user called sarah who is the hr admin i have a video on how to add dynamic approvers the link will be in the description for this video so do check it out now once the approval action is created if the approver approves it all i am doing right here is the same steps as before but the approval status in this case is approved once again i'm maintaining the approval history as before and if the hr admin rejects it status is rejected by hr and i am maintaining the approval history as before of course i can even send notification emails to the creator now once i've created my flow i will go ahead and save this flow now now once the flow is saved this flow is now listening to new travel requests getting created in my sharepoint list the moment the request is created the approval process begins So here I am in my travel request list. I'm going to create a new item. I have added the trip details. I'm going to plug in the destination. And once I select the destination, it's going to show me the header formatting. Pick the travel start date and end date. Added some airfare and hotel details, and I will go ahead and click on save. 
Now, once I have added this information, as you can see in my SharePoint list, I have all the details captured right here. And if we focus on the approval status column, currently this column is empty. That's because the approval process has not started. And as I was speaking, if you observe, the approval status column is now pending manager approval. That's because the manager approval process has started. Now, if I select my item, we can actually look at the process live as it moves. So right now it's under manager approval. So the status is indicating that my manager in active directory is going to get an approval task. My manager in AD is a user called James. And as you can see right here, James gets an approval request task based on the request that the user has created. So here's the task that gets generated. I even have a link to the list item in SharePoint and James can take his decision right here, whether he approves it or rejects it based on the data that I have provided. Let's say James comes in and says it looks good and clicks submit. Now what's happening at the back end is it's logging the approval response of James and flow is going to move the process ahead and check this out live right here in the header itself. It has changed the manager approval to green. That's because the manager approval process is complete and now it's gone ahead to the HR approval process. At the same time, if you look at the approval commands, the entire history of the approval process is being logged right here and check the usage of emojis right here. The approval process started. It was approved by James and James put in this commands. You can even plug in additional details like how long did they take for the approval process, which date and time did they respond to. All of those things are possible right here. And now logging in as Sarah, who is the HR manager, she receives the next approval task wherein she can either approve the request or reject the request. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and reject the request, put in my message, click submit. So this approval information is going to be logged and check this out. As I speak to you, once the flow logs that information, it will go ahead and change the status. So now, as you can see, just by looking at the header itself, I can see where we are in the approval process. The manager had approved it. The HR admin rejected it. So it's showing a red status indicator right here. And if I look at the approval info, the status is rejected by HR and the entire approval history is available for me right here. So that's how powerful M365 truly is. I created a very simple travel request list based on a Microsoft list template. Then I added all these cool formatting options in there, wherein I can see the actual destination plugged in on a map. I can see the approval status. I can see where we are in the approval process. And not just that, I even added an approval flow using Power Automate to add a multi-layer approval process. All of the JSON formatting samples that I have showcased here, I will make them available. So check the description of this video out to get all that information. If you like this video, then don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit the bell icon as well so that whenever I post my latest video, you get notified about it. Thank you so much for watching.